Hey, what's up? It's Mai Yang from Mix in the Dark. I've got a brief introduction for you because the story I'm about to tell you is a tad long, so I want to make sure I'm not wasting any of your time. Just a quick update, I wanted to let you know that I will not be releasing episodes during the month of December. I am taking this time to be with my family for the holidays and will return during January 2021. Don't worry though, I won't completely abandon you. I will still check comments and messages, which reminds me, it is the perfect time for you to send in your stories. Connect with me at mixinthedark at gmail.com. Let's get started with our story. Please enjoy What Lies Beneath. This story takes place in California. We used to live in this creepy two-story house. Our landlord was Mian. At the time, Asian rentals were cheap and there were lots of lands for gardening and raising chickens. My parents loved this creepy house, but us kids hated it because creepy things always happened to us. We were able to move out of this creepy house for five years after making a move to a ranch house. Unfortunately, the house market and economy was bad, so we had to find a new house. My parents ended up running into our old landlord who owned that creepy two-story house. He explained that our old house is now divided into a duplex home. Of course, my parents being desperate for a place took his offer right away. They were able to garden as much as they wanted and raise as many chickens as they wanted. The duplex was split in a way where one complex was located in the back of the house and one complex was located in the front of the house. My parents ended up taking the front of the house while my sister and her little family of four lived in the back of the house. My sister had a four-year-old boy and an eight-year-old girl. Every morning before she goes to work, she would bring her son over to my parents' house in the front so that they can babysit him. Chance is his name. Chance comes over every day happy and wanting to play with my other niece that lived with my parents. I remember there was this really big black cat that always came into my parents' yard. This house had an opening to the basement that is on the side of the house. There was also a little opening on the other side of the house. This black cat would go into it. I bet it probably lived there. One morning, my sister tried to bring Chance over. That particular day, Chance made it extra difficult on my sister. He absolutely did not want to go. I want to note that Chance is a really naughty and stubborn child. He always gets in trouble. For whatever reason, he didn't want to go to my parents' side of the house anymore. He stopped coming over and ended up staying by himself in the back complex. My parents were always in the back of the house because they were usually gardening and taking care of the chickens. Instead of Chance coming over, they opted to have the screen door in the back open while they gardened to check on Chance every so often. A few days have passed and my parents started to notice something different about Chance. Every time they checked on him, he would be talking and playing with his toys like there was someone else there. I also want to mention that during this time, I visited often and began to see that strange cat around more. For some reason, I just had this feeling that this cat was not a cat and it was actually something else. Something that maybe took the form of a cat. One day, my sister came home from work. She noticed muddy footprints. The footprints looked like a newborn baby's footprint. It was all over her kitchen floor and her bathroom mirror. She also noticed that her cabinets were opened everywhere in her house. Her cooking sauces were poured all over her kitchen sink. Of course, we didn't know who did it, so Chance got the blame. 
Chance told us that it wasn't him and that he is telling the truth. He kept telling us that his friend wanted to get him into trouble and that it was his friend. We didn't believe him. He was the only person in that area of the house and like I said, Chance was a troublemaker. Chance again explained that his friend's name is Danny and that he comes from a tunnel far away. Trying to make sense of it, my sister dismissed it as an imaginary friend. It went on for a while. Before you know it, Chance had mentioned it to my other nieces and nephews. My sister was afraid. She started this habit of yelling at whatever the thing was to leave Chance alone anytime she goes somewhere. One morning, she carried Chance to my parents' house and locked up her place. On this particular day, my mom wanted to check to make sure that my sister had turned off the heater before going to work. When she got to the door, the doorknob wouldn't turn. It was extremely hard and she struggled for a while. She was finally able to open the door. As she opened the door, her eyes widened. The house was trashed. She went to get my dad to take a look. The couch pillows were thrown on the ground. The kids' shoes were put on top of each other. Chance's dinosaur toys were formed in a line, in a circle, like a kid was playing with them. The dinner table chairs were stacked on top of each other to the point where they were able to reach the ceiling. All of the cabinets were opened, including the refrigerator. Chance's leftover hamburger was splattered on the ground, and there was ketchup that didn't really look like ketchup but it had that consistency of blood, and it was all over the kitchen floor. And, again, the newborn baby footprints were present. It made a trail from the splash of ketchup leading to the bedroom and into the bed. And on top of the splatter of hamburger and red writing was the name Danny. My family decided to contact this lady who has helped another relative with something paranormal in the past. We call her Nia Ba Ying. She's a psychic medium and Hmong shaman. She told us to come over that evening. 6 p.m. was our scheduled time to meet her at her home. We took a chance with us. I will never forget this day. We were all sitting in her living room as she explained the situation to us. Nepa Yang told us that Danny was a little Mian boy. He was the one that made all of the mess. He was a troubled child and wanted Chance to also get in trouble. The tantrum that happened that day happened because my sister had yelled at him and took Chance away. Danny had no one to play with. Nyapa Yang looked further and was able to correctly tell us about the time that Chance's dad yelled at him and hit his bottom for doing something. Chance went and cried in his bedroom in the exact spot where Danny died. That day, Danny noticed that no one came to love or comfort Chance. Chance's cries woke up the spirit of Danny who promised to become Chance's friend and to protect him like a brother. It turns out that after we moved out of the house five years ago, a new family moved in. An unfortunate accident happened. The mom and dad of the house were arguing about something. The dad was holding a gun in his hand at the time. His son happened to walk by during their fight, and his dad accidentally released the trigger into his son. The son was hit on the back and died shortly after. When we were there at Nepa Yang's house, she asked Chance a couple of times to talk about Danny, but Chance would not speak of his friend. Nepa Yang tried to convince Chance to let go of Danny so that they can separate, but Chance was hard-headed. It seems they made a promise to be brothers forever. Nepa Yang mentioned that the cat that keeps coming by is the reincarnated form of Danny. She believes that because Danny's body wasn't buried and was not sent traditionally, he came back as the black cat who visits the place where he died. 
Nipa Ying tied a string onto Chance's hand so that Danny could not manipulate Chance. She blessed the string in such a way where any time that Chance speaks to Danny, it would be Nipa Ying's words and power speaking against Danny. Nipa Ying suggested we call a shaman to Oning to try and get rid of Danny. Oning is a cultural ritual performed by a shaman in an attempt to investigate paranormal happenings and negotiate with the dead. In this case, it would mean to negotiate for Danny's spirit to leave our family. Nipa Ying also warned us to be careful when we get home, since it seems Danny knows that we have received help. Us locking Chance's voice through the blessed string may also upset Danny. Since Danny is able to move and destroy properties, he is considered a very strong spirit. Upsetting him may cause him to try and hurt our family or set traps to fool us. My sister was afraid to go back home, so she decided to take her family to sleep over at our eldest sister's house. The next morning at our eldest sister's house, they noticed the newborn baby footprints on the front door and red ketchup fingerprints on the doorknob. It sure looked like Danny was trying to get in but was unsuccessful. Later that evening, the oning performed by the shaman happened. It seemed to have worked because things quieted down after. My sister also moved out of that house. My parents stayed in their complex though. Two months later, my mom started to get really sick, so sick that she could not get out of bed. She couldn't even move, her muscles were just too weak. We couldn't figure out what was wrong with her, so once again we called Nepa Ying. Nepa Ying seemed panicked on the phone. She said that she needed to come by the house immediately to Onning. That weekend after the ritual, we found out that Danny never left. The first shaman did not cross Danny over. His ritual was to take Danny and ditch him far away. Danny eventually found a way back, and this time he was torturing my mom. Nipa Ying said that Danny tied my mom's spirit because he wanted her to feel how he felt. Nepa Ying wanted to go to the back of the house where Chance used to play with Danny. When we got to Chance's old room, she pointed to the middle of the room and said, That's where Danny is. She explained that when Danny's mom and dad were fighting and accidentally shot him, Danny was shot in the back still holding a toy car in his hand. He didn't even know what was happening. And actually, he wasn't even dead yet. But the dad took him out to the backyard, wrapped him in a tarp, and threw him all the way inside the basement right underneath that bedroom. This was also where Chance cried the night his dad got mad at him. Danny wasn't even dead yet when his dad wrapped him up. He died suffering. He could have been saved, but his dad thought that he was dead. Similarly, my mom couldn't get up or move because Danny tied her up the same way he died so that she can feel his pain. Nepa Yang also explained that he knows that my dad is a good person and because my parents moved back to the house after all of those years and that he wanted my dad to find him and cross him over. After Nepa Yang told us about his body being down there, my dad remembers that when the landlord came to fix the water pipe, he had to go down to the basement and he would not let my dad go in at all. The owner told my dad to go into the basement later and turn off the water. My dad said he saw a big lump wrapped in tarp all the way inside the basement, but was unsure of what it was. We think the owner knew and was helping to hide the body, because after we found out about Danny, we questioned the owner. The owner, of course, denied it and all of a sudden wanted my parents to move out. He told them that he was going to raise rent. He found all kinds of excuses to try to get my parents to move out. At this point, my parents were looking for another house to rent. They needed more time, but the owner would come over and argue with them and he was just being a big jerk all of the time. One night, the house was set on fire. Someone poured gasoline all over the front porch. 
Luckily, my mom smelled the smoke and was able to get my little brother and dad out in time to call firefighters. The front of the house was all damaged. It was so scary and I just thank God that no one was hurt, even though a lot of our belongings had been destroyed. The owner seemed happy that the house was burned. We think he did it. We think since my family couldn't move out soon enough, he was trying to kill them or push them to leave in case we found the body in the basement. That's just all theory though. Two weeks later, we were finally able to go back to the house to gather some things that had not been burned in the fire. My whole family decided to go back to the house and pull that tarp out. My dad really wanted to see if he could find Danny. But when we got there, it looked like someone beat us to it. The tarp had been opened. All that was left was stains. It had been so many years already that we couldn't tell if it was blood or dark mud. The owner also flooded the basement so that no one can go in. It's been about a year now. I'm afraid to say that I guess Danny will never get to rest. <laughs>